Good evening, Saints. Good evening. You encouraged tonight? Yes. Glad to be here? Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to welcome everyone here. Those of you online, I want to welcome you as well. I was thinking about um, how God used to feed the children of Israel with that manna. And he told them, don't save none for the next day. You got to go out and get some fresh manna. So we're here tonight to get some fresh manna. We can't go off yesterday and what we did last week or Sunday. We got to get some fresh. Amen. 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 So we ain't going to hold it up. We're going to stand and go into prayer. Ask God to come down and help us. Sister Cynthia, would you pray for us, please? Dear precious Father, we thank you, dear God, tonight, dear God, for being here. Father, thank you, dear God, for you, another opportunity to oh, give yeah. your name praise and thanks, Lord. Father God, as we assemble together, Lord, we need your help, Lord God. Father, we're asking that you would just bless us, Lord. Come down. Give us a visit, we pray. Help our hearts to receive whatever you have for us, Lord God. Pray that you would bless in the singing and the testimonies, dear God. Father God, whatever you have for us, dear God. We want to be able to receive. We want our hearts to be prepared to receive it, dear God. We ask that you bless each and every one here. Father God, we don't want anyone to come here in vain, dear God. We want all to be blessed and take something away from this service tonight, dear God. Bless, dear God, our dear brother Lee as he comes forth, Lord God. Appreciate him so much, dear God. Thank you how he has labored hard and long, dear God. Father, you know about his precious wife as well, dear God. We're holding up those things of God, Lord. Those are going through dear God. My God, behind closed doors where they're fighting the good fight of faith, oh God. And Father, we want to do our part, dear God. We don't want to sin and not praying for them, Lord. So we're asking that you would bless us, dear God, and help us, dear God, to give you our all, to give you our whole. We want a wholehearted service, dear God. Father, bless us, we pray. Those who are not feeling well, who are pressing their way, Lord. Father, give them a token for good, dear God. Father, for their efforts, we pray, Lord God. Be with us in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. Amen. Standing for the first song. Good evening, Saints. We're going to sing page 156, The All Cleansing Fountain. There's a fountain open in the house of God. There's a fountain open in the house of God. Where the vilest of sinners may go. All test the power of the crimson blood, of the blood that makes whiter and Praise the Lord, I am washed in the all cleansing blood of the Lamb, and my robes are whiter. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. When that fountain was open in the Savior's side, how the thief did rejoice in that day. And when dying, Lord, remember me, he cried. Oh, the blood washed his sins all the way. Praise the Lord. I am lost. Will you come in reason, said the Lord with me? Though your sins red like crimson do glow, and if dyed with scarlet stains, your heart may be. I will make it as white as the snow. Yes, 
Yes, a broken spirit and a contrite heart. Thou wilt never despise, O my God, but wilt fully cleanse it now in every part. Till I'm whiter than snow by the blood. I have overcome now by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm clothed in my raiment so white. And I'm on my journey to that glorious land. Where forever I'll dwell in the light. What are these in spotless robes and whence came they? As they're singing with palms in their hands. These through tribulation gain the victory. Having washed in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. I am washed in the all-cleansing blood of the Lamb. And my robes are whiter than the driven snow. I am washed in the blood of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. I plunging souls into it. We are going to sing 115, Muddy to Save and Keep. Mighty to save and mighty to keep. Grace like the ocean, boundless and deep. Will you believe it? Will you receive it? Life everlasting Glory to God. Glory to God. I know I'm saved. This is a blessing. This is a blessing I have. Blessing I have now I am happy. Now I am happy. Joyful and glory. Reigning over the world. I should be made. Mighty, mighty to save. To save my power. Mighty, mighty to keep in this evil time. Watching and praying, trusting, obeying. Thus, life is all sublime. Life is all sublime. Glory to God. I know. Sin here below. Mighty to conquer Satan, we know. In every trial or self denial, Christ reigns forever. Mighty to keep in life's darkest hour. Mighty to shield us from Satan's power. Then do not falter. Stay on the altar. Christ is our strong high tower. Mighty to keep in life's darkest hour. Then do not falter. Stay on the altar.
You know, I got a testimony on that. Oh, my Lord. Look at it. Amen. Glory be to God. Woo. The Lord has been doing something. Yeah. Oh, thank the Lord. Glory to God. I'm going to let Rissa go first. Saints, I want to thank God tonight for salvation. Yeah. I want to thank God. That song said, glory to God. I know no, I'm, I'm saved. saved. Oh. This is the blessing I had craved. Saints of God, I appreciate God tonight. Saints, I've been overflowing. I told God when I get to church, I'm going to give you praise. God, tonight, saints of God, I thank God for keeping me. God saved my soul, and I was burdened for my kids. Thanks to God, God saved my oldest daughter down to my oldest son, all four of them. God bless my home. I appreciate God tonight. I thank God tonight. Thanks to God. I thank God that he pays to serve God. I thank God y'all can make it. CJ, you can make it. Cassidy, you can make it. Harmony, you can make it. Cardio, you can make it. You can do this. God got you. I'm encouraged tonight, thanks to God. My heart is so full. It's so full. It seemed like the enemy was coming against my mind all weekend. I said, God, help me. We went to Monday night service, and the brother was talking about reviving your fire. I went home. I said, God, revive my soul. I got off my knees. My soul was running up the stairs, but I want to be saved. I said, praise God. God for what he is doing for me. I'm encouraged, saints of God. I've been trying to contain it. I've been trying to sit down quietly, but I can't sit down on God no more. I'm thankful, saints of God. I'm saved. I am saved. He set me free. I'm encouraged. Y'all pray for me. It's like fire shed up in my bones. <laughs> And let the fire fall on me tonight. Glory to God. Thank the Lord, Sister Rissa. Love you, love you, love you. Stand, girl. You hear me? You can make it. You can make it. I want to thank the Lord tonight for my salvation. I thank God for what he's doing. Um, uh, Monday, um, we went to the jail. And it um, seemed like the enemy has been just fighting ever since. But when we went there, we came down there. We was telling the girls about, well, first of all, we had a new crew, another crew that came in. And. We had several girls the other night that came in and um, I was telling them, Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light of the world and in him is no darkness. So we talked to them about the light and we let them know that God wants to turn the light switch on in their souls. You know, as easy as that, just repenting, giving your life to God, Marissa, telling God I want to make it, you know, just all of that. We went into all of that, but this part was so encouraging to me. Um, the Lord sent me to, he just shifted me. And he took me to um, blind by made us, by, you know, the blind man. Yeah. His name is so hard for me to say. But anyway, he took me there, and um, he was saying how he was a beggar. He was a beggar, plus he was blind. He was in darkness. So I was telling him, I said, you know, it's like this, you know. He was a beggar, so as he sit there, people gave him if they wanted to, and if they didn't, they didn't. And that's how the dope man is, brother. If he want to give you something, he'll give it. And if he don't, he won't. But he sit there and he heard about, he heard about, he asked them, what, what's all this commotion? They said, Jesus of Nazareth. But the thing that stood out to most to me was when he said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah, yeah. And I was telling them girls, I said, cry out to God. Yeah. Cry out to God. Ask God, Lord, have mercy on me. Cry out. They just broke. They began to cry and, you know, cry out to God. Ask God to have mercy on you. But he acknowledged God. He said, thou son of David. He acknowledged him right then. Then he said, thou son of David, have mercy on me. He cried for mercy first. Yeah. God heard his cry. Then the Lord turned. And what do you want? Amen. My God, what? I told him, now cry out. Amen. Now he asked him, what do you want? He said, I want to see. So you don't have to sit in darkness no more. You can see. God can let you see. You don't have to stumble no more. You go in a room and it's dark. You can't see none of the smudges on the wall. You can't see the holes in the floor. You can't see the dirt in the room. But when you turn on that light, yeah. I said right now, you can't yeah. see the sinfulness yeah. of sin. Yeah. But when God turns on that light, you're going to see that dirt on the floor. Yeah. You're going to see that dirt on that window. 
You're going to see that filth on the door knob. But God has got to turn the light on. He done turned the light on in her soul. I appreciate God so much. And then on top of that, the girls can call Brother Tim. And, you know, it's just it's good. The thing is moving. It's, it's, it's just moving fast. But I thank God we're not in darkness tonight. I am so grateful. I'm so grateful that God turned the light switch on in my soul. He turned it on. He helped me to see my way. I couldn't see my way, Brother Tim. I stumbled. You're falling holes. You're falling ditches and everything else. But if you can see your way, God can help you. I was so encouraged tonight. I appreciate God. When we left that jail, the devil came so hard on me. He, he came hard. But God has touched my body and brought me through. And I thank God for that tonight. I want to clear up something. Sister Alamaya threw me under the bus. <laughs> um, they contact me through smart communication. And uh, believe me, I've been doing this for a long time. I know what to do and what not to do. And uh, I, that's why I shifted it over to her. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't have no communication like that with them. No personal communication. Brother Tim, hands is clean. Amen. Come on, sister. Testify. <laughs> I want to thank God for salvation. Before I got Amen. saved, I didn't really think enough about, like, my family and, like, hell and all of that. But when I got saved, it felt like my eyes, it was like, I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, no, you know, like, what about the rest of my family? And I was on my knees every night, y'all, praying for my sister. Uh, yes. And I just felt like I just needed her. And God hurt me every single time. Amen. And he Amen. saved my sister. Amen. Amen. And you know how much I needed that. I am so encouraged today. Boy of the Lord. That is big. <laughs> God, oh, pray for me, y'all. Yes, we'll keep you in prayer. Come on now. Amen. I thank God for my salvation. And Amen. I thank God for saving all of my siblings because I really didn't want none of them to go to hell. And I want God to save the rest of my family. And I thank God for saving me for one month and for 16 days. Amen. Come on, Grandpa. <laughs> Truly thank God. Man. Salvation is yes, good. Sir. It's good. Yes, sir. You know, the scripture come alive where it says sometimes we don't know the prayers we are, but the Holy Ghost <laughs> gotta make intercessions. Yeah. I was stressing to pray for healing. Right. That's the stop right there. <laughs> I was just gonna pray just for healing. That's all he's gonna I was gonna get. So it's, I'm a healer and I'm gonna just save all of them. Amen. And they got so many of them, I don't even call them by the individual nights, call them my guys. <laughs> the Lord has saved the guys. <laughs> guys, guys, stand up, guys. Oh all my guys. <laughs> Amen. 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 God is good, you know. And, and, and a lot of times, you know, the enemy will come in and try to make you think that, oh, this was, this was not of God. This was going to happen. Some, and God, sometimes you put a, stamp, put a stamp on it. Amen. He put a stamp on it. Because I talked to my daughter today. She had a job offer. She prayed about it. We prayed about it. She got the job, right? Amen. Amen. Well, whoever heard a person get a job and get promoted on your probation period. You know what I'm saying? That's the stamp right there. I said, Lord, Amen. You, he's Amen. there. Lord Amen. is there. God is absolutely good. I appreciate God. You know, and um, as a father, you know, I feel partial to my daughter. She's phenomenal. She's phenomenal. Amen. I Amen. always looked at my brother Lyle was phenomenal. I said, he's way out ahead of everybody. He's just so far ahead of myself. He's amazing me, you know, but my daughter, Marissa, is in that same vein. It's Amen. just whatever she gets involved in, she just shoots way out there with it, you know? And I was just thinking, like, you know, you got, you, you got saved and all your children, you get a job, you get promoted on your probationary period. It's like, Lord, Lord, where's, where's your, you're you, you going right, to do right. something. Where, yeah. If you stay true, <laughs> God's going to do some things, you know? Amen. And I just appreciate God because salvation is that good, though. Yes, sir. It's, it's that good. It really is that good, you know? And I thank God for saving my family. I know there's more to come. Um, we're going to be faithful and true. Be faithful Amen. and true, and we're going to see what God's going to do. Don't give up hope, saints. Don't give up hope. I'm looking for the same thing. Amen. 
One thing, God, for my salvation. I wanted to to uh, read these lyrics. I really don't know the melody to the song that well, and it's an older song, but the lyrics really, you know, just just made me remind, gave me a reminder of what God did for me. And the song is called "He He Came Looking for Me." And in one of the lyrics it says, "Satan had already picked out my grave. His plan was to move forward and to put me away. I drifted so far. Would anyone care that I'd soon be lost?" I knew my destruction was a matter of time, but Jesus appeared and said, this one is mine, and I'm saved from all, from all harm, for he walked through the storm, he came looking for me. You know, and I'm just so thankful for my salvation. You know, it's a, truly a privilege to be saved, and you, salvation is not just saving your soul, but the benefits. I was reading yesterday, and the Bible says, in Psalms, it says, he daily loads us with benefits. You know, and, and if we're not careful, we forget the, the many benefits that we have in salvation. I'm just so grateful that, that, that Jesus came looking for me specifically. You know, you can forget being in salvation for a little while. You can forget how, how you were and, and what state you were in. But listening to the song, it, it reminded me that the Bible says the wicked are as a troubled sea that cannot rest. You know, and as I was in sin, I could not rest. I couldn't find peace. I couldn't find that happiness. I was searching here and there, up and down. But I'm thankful that he came looking for me. I, I really, truly lost, had lost a, a bit of hope in a, in a moment. But I'm so thankful that, you know, on a Sunday morning, God came looking for me. And I'm, I'm thankful that he saved my soul clean, deliverance, breakthrough. And ever since then, I haven't had the same this is probably one of the greatest experiences I've had in salvation. I've been saved a couple times, but nothing like this where I have a true relationship with God. You know, there's nothing that exceed, can exceed this, um, this, this, this high. You know, people talk about how you can smoke this and get high, but I've still been high, and I've been, I've been high for a year and about seven months because of salvation. So I'm just thankful for my salvation. There's nothing that can top this. This is the greatest gift on earth. And I'm just thankful for uh, even the Monday night service, Brother John, talking about the urgency of revival, stirring up that fire within us. And there's a uh, scripture in, in, in um, Luke, I believe it's Luke 24, 32, and it was talking about how when Jesus arose, he, he showed himself to some countrymen, and, as he, finished, and he, as he finished speaking to them and he left, the scripture says they was talking to themselves, they, they said, did not our hearts burn within us? You know, when they were talking to Jesus. And I'm just thankful that that's what salvation does. Amen. It gives you a heart of fire, a heart, uh, a heart of just, uh, just trying to go after it. You know, I'm so thankful that ever since salvation, my heart has been burning and it hasn't stopped burning. You know, burning for the truth, burning to just get, get deeper, go higher. So I'm just thankful for my salvation. Please hold me up in prayer. I'm extremely encouraged and I'm endeavoring to push this thing forward. Amen. 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 Praise God. I want to thank the Lord tonight for my salvation. Um, Yesterday was my son's birthday, and 12 years ago, we probably would have been planning a set or a get-together or whatever. But instead, we sat on the porch, and we laughed, and we talked just about all day, just about all day. And I thought about it today when he came over, and we sat, and we shared a cup of coffee and we laughed and talked and did other things on the computer and whatnot, but it was just the peace. I thought about the peace and the joy that I have. Because 12 years ago, I probably would have woke up with a hangover, for real. Um, but I woke up sober, Amen. feeling good feeling good, and when I think about it today, it's been 11 years since I had a cigarette. It's been 11 Amen. years since I had a, a drink of that cognac or that wine or whatever I felt like drinking for that particular day. And I didn't Amen. realize how much inner joy I could have without those things. That's right. Because in sin, you have to rely on what you think is giving you pleasure. You have to rely on that. And I was to the point where, don't let me wake up and don't have no cigarette. I would have a fit. And everybody in the house would feel that. But when I thought about it yesterday, how peaceful it was, how quiet it was, and it wasn't me. It was God in me. Amen. Amen. 
and I'm just so grateful. And I'm like Marissa, I'm overwhelmed today. Amen. I'm just overwhelmed. I don't, I don't have to rely on a get together. I don't have to rely on a, a house full of people. I don't have to rely on man to do anything for me. Because everything that I need and I want is in God. Amen. And I thank him for that. Amen. I thank him for that. You know, a, a lot of times I feel like God doesn't have to give me anything because he done already gave me enough. Right. He's already done enough. I am so grateful to be saved today. Amen, Amen sis. I am so grateful because he's done so much for me already. I have to give him some glory. Amen. 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 All right. Is Coretta going to be out? Uh-oh. Keep it going. Go ahead. Come on, sir. I would like to give God thanks tonight for Amen. salvation. Thank God for being back in the midst of the saints. Appreciate the Lord how he blessed us to be able to go to the revival there in Springfield and, and just to witness such a beautiful, beautiful services and how God so blessed Brother Eddie and blessed Sister Boya. She interpreted everything and, and the uh, Haitian community, it, they just came out in numbers. It was so beautiful just mm. to see how another nation can glorify God in this gospel, this Amen. truth. Amen. And just sit there like little birds, just eating it all up. It was just wonderful. I just thank God for how he allowed me to go. And, and God bless Brother Eddie. He was able to go forth. He told me later, he said, he couldn't preach like he wanted to. But you wouldn't have never known it. <laughs> he had to use two Bibles, a French Bible and an American Bible. You know, it slowed him up a little bit. But God took him and worked with him, I tell you. It was a glorious, glorious meeting. Amen. Thank God for the souls that got saved. Sister <coughs> Debbie's two children fell down at the altar. That little child fell at the altar and wept so. And God Amen. saved her soul. And they just happened to be there on the weekend, for, for some weekend. And God arranged it and yeah. ordained that yeah. they be there. Yeah. And he saved them. And I appreciate the Lord. I'm so thankful how God can allow us to share with others. You know, it, it was just it was Amen. just beautiful, saints of God. Had you been there, you'd have been able to witness what I did, but it was just beautiful. Amen. And thank God for how he's able to just anoint and appoint and work out every detail that we prayed about. And Brother Eddie said he had never preached in, in Creole, but he, you would have known it, brother. He, God just blessed him, <laughs> anointed him, I tell you. You, you just thought he just gave him the gift of tongues, the way he went forth. It was just awesome. It was awesome. And the others that went, they probably can tell you, but I just thank God, my own self, for how he allowed thank us God. to be able to go. I appreciate that. So, saints of God, pray for us. Amen. I mean, it just enriched my heart. You know, the, the church has lost a lot of people there, and they, have, they are few in number, a few feeble Jews, but God is filling the place up with Haitians. Amen. If the Amen. other people in Springfield don't want it, God will send the Haitians. Amen. He's filling Amen. it up. So That's we right. thank God for That's the right. great mercies that he's showing <clears throat> on the saints there in Springfield. And those people, they just talk. They love Brother Kelly. They love him. Yeah. I tell you, girl, Brother Kelly just is poured out so much love, and the saints there poured so much love on those uh, Haitian people that they just love being there. And, and it's just awesome. So pray for them and pray for them that God will continue to bless. Amen. Amen. Got a couple of testimonies over here. Um, I want to thank God for uh, one, keeping me for uh, a month. Um, first of all, I would all right. never think out of the whole year that I went through that I would actually find myself happy. Like, just as happy as I am right now. Um, wow. Even though right. I... Even though I may not have my dad right now, or um, he may not be here with me, but I just know if my dad could see me right now, he would just be oh, so yeah. happy. Yeah. Just so happy because, like, I don't even know how to, like, express how I feel. No matter how sad I've been feeling, it's just, I just know my dad is, like, 
perfectly okay he's in heaven like if he could just see me just how happy I am and just like how not like depressed or sad or just crying about other stuff but I can cry because I'm happy I have something just to cry about just to be happy just to have a smile on my face and just just knowing I have a peace inside and that I'm okay. No matter how many tears I cry because I don't see my dad every day. But it's at the end of the day, I still have a peace inside. Like I can see him again and I will see him again. And it's just so amazing just to know every single day. I tell myself, I'm gonna see my dad. I'm gonna see him no matter if it takes as many years as it does. It doesn't matter if it takes one day at a time, one step at a time. I'm going to see him and I'm going to go exactly where he is and I want to do exactly what he did to get to heaven and just know that I am okay and I just, I'm just so happy just to see, just to know that I will be okay and that I am okay and just pray for me that I can keep what I have. Amen. 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 This will be our last testimony for the night. Uh, I want to thank God for protecting me today. I was uh, on a school bus and all of a sudden, um, it started moving. It started like moving around, and there were three cars in a two-way street. Um, and uh, we could have gotten hurt, uh, the people on the bus and I. But I want to thank God because nothing happened. We didn't even hit a car. And um, I want to thank God for protecting the other driver because uh, you know it's a bus and just another tri- um, car. So like, who's gonna win? But like you know, uh, I want to thank God for. Um, <laughs> Because there, there's no casual, there were no casualties, and he may have just done that because I was on the bus, but who knows? I want to yeah. thank God. Amen. 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 Come on, God. Amen. Amen. God protects his people and those around him. <laughs> All right, it's time to transition to prayer. We thank God for these testimonies tonight. Amen. Truly do. On my right, we need outspoken, serious requests only. Sister Deb's brother, Alan, out of Menlo Park, is in the hospital. We want to remember him in prayer. I want to thank the saints for praying for me as I was out of town over the weekend. But I would like for the saints to remember my nephew. Um, He came to service, and now he's dealing with blood cancer. And they put him in there. They put him in the um, ER. They took him through the ER and found out that his blood was low, so they had to give him a blood transfusion. And now he's in intensive care, so I'm asking that you remember him in prayer. His name is Maurice. That's the same one, John Osborne. On my left. Uh, Saints, I like the saints to Help me pray for the Church of God in Pakistan. Uh, the brother put a request for a brother there that got injured and really hurt by the Muslim, and he's not doing good at all, and they're requesting a prayer. I believe his name is Brother Shiraz, but I could, maybe I'm not pronouncing it correctly. So, you know, today is him, and tomorrow is somebody else, and they're, you know, they're really being attacked because of their faith. You know, and and even the children, when they go, they have a Church of God school. And even when the children go to the high school, they're they're in danger because they're attacking them because of their faith. And I just, you know, really have a burden for the Church of God in Pakistan. If anybody can help me, you know, in their prayers, remember them in prayer in a special way, I would really appreciate it. Online. Brother Vernon Coleman said he would like the saints to um, pray for his sister in recovery from a serious surgery. Lee May Banks is asking the saints to pray for his mom, Sister Debbie. Frank Parrish is asking the uh, Church of God saints to pray for him. That's all we have this evening. Saints returning the corner on reaching out with these uh, jail and prison ministries, so pray for that also. All others, by the lifting of your hand, God sees and he knows. 
humility see to come to the altar. Brother Frank, would you pray for the Heavenly Father, we're thankful tonight, Lord, for this opportunity to come before you. Lord, we appreciate all that you've been doing, and Lord, you've been busy. You've been busy in our lives, dear God. You've been saving our children and loved ones. My God, we've been traveling, and Lord, we've had safe passage, dear God. And Lord, you, we've had a few saints go home, and my God, you're blessing those that remain. And Lord, you're doing the work. And we recognize it, and we thank you so much, dear God. You've been good to us, Father. Lord, we appreciate you for all that you do, my God, how you care about your children to the detail. My God, we are blessed and highly favored. And Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. Father God, we thank you to God how the saints are completely relying on you. Because we realize, my God, there is no other source. There is no other source, my God. Father God, we'd rather serve Jesus and put our trust in him. Lord, so we pray to God even tonight, my God, remember Sister Deborah, Lord, and we thank you for her faithfulness, dear God, and how you blessed her down through the years, Lord. When she lost her good friend, you was right there for her, my God. And Lord, you've been blessed in many ways, the congregation and other those that are there. And now, my God, is her brother, Father God, we're praying, Lord, a special prayer for her brother. Even right now, my God, you give him a touch from heaven, Lord. Father, you touch his body, my God. Lord, that he'll realize, my God, that we're only going to be here for a short time, and we got to take care of our business, Lord. We got to be on point, Father. We need a savior, dear God. Father, I pray for all those that we pray for, all the sick and afflicted, all those who any type of way that they would turn and not just look to Jesus for a healing or for a particular blessing, but my God, we need you as our Lord and Savior. Father, so we pray you bless and undertake, my God. Sister Ellis, request, dear God. Oh, Lord, we pray you just bless, Father. Have mercy, dear God. Lord, my God, we pray, Father, that you visit the hospital room, my God. And Lord, give him a touch, Father. Rouse him up, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Lord. Father, just bless undertaken in a real way. Father, the many requests that went forth, Lord, many that didn't, Lord, you know all about them all, my God. Lord, we're just praying, Father, we just pour out our hearts that we give it all the burdens that we carry, Lord. Just give them to you, Father. Cast all I care upon you, because you care for us, Lord. My God, and you want to see the good, my God, and all this come about, and we want to be strengthened by these situations, Lord. My God, as long as we're on this earth, we're going to have situations, but my God, we realize that we have a burden bearer. We know, my God, the solution, Lord, and it's not within ourselves. So we want to stay clear that we can pray for our children. We can pray about finances. We can pray about relationships. Lord, we can pray about no matter what the situation is, we can take it to God in prayer with confidence and know without a doubt, my God, you're going to see us out, Father. Lord, so we pray you continue to bless my God. Sister Melinda, Lord, we thank you for our dear sister, my God, and we appreciate all that you've been doing for her, Lord God. Father, we pray you bless her, even right now. Give her a touch from him. Comfort her, Lord. Bless her in a mighty, special way to God. Lord, my God, just help her to realize that she's not forgotten. My God, she's a part of our daily prayers. Lord, bless her, raise her back up. Send her back to us, dear God. Healthy and strong, dear God, in Jesus' name. Bless Brother Lee in the most special way, dear God. Lord, give him what he needs in this hour. Lord, to be the father, the husband, the minister, the pastor. Lord, all these capacities, dear God. Be with him, Lord, in Jesus. We don't take them for granted. Nothing for granted, my God. We're going to put prayer behind it. My God, we're going to carry that burden, Lord. We're going to be right in there with you, Lord God. Father, so we pray. You just bless and undertake, Father. Even our service tonight, we pray you bless us tonight, Lord God. Lord, we pray, my God, that we brought inspiration with us. We didn't come just to receive, but we came to impart. Lord God, we got a responsibility, Father. As you bless us throughout our day, my God, as you answer in prayer, my God, we got to bring it in and share. Somebody needs to hear it. Somebody needs to be encouraged and inspired, my God. Somebody needs to know that God is still on the throne, still on the throne, my God. And we can come before you right now, my God, with all our petitions, my God, with confidence, knowing that God is able and he will. My God, we pray, Father. So, Lord, continue to have your own way. Lord, we thank you for saving the children. My God, thank you, Lord, for saving the children, Lord. Father God, so we pray you continue to bless my God. Lord, not just our children, but those of us that have children and loved ones that are incarcerated. Lord, we're praying for a special prayer, Lord. We're looking for some results now. We're looking for, my God, some children and some saints' uh, burdens, my God, to come to fruition, Lord. My God, Brother Murph and Sister, my God, Mobley, dear God. We're praying, Lord. My God, we want to see our brothers and sisters home, Lord. My God, some of the saints' children we've been praying for, Lord. We want to see the results, dear God. 
Lord, so help us, we pray. Bless us, undertake. Help us not to get discouraged. My God, we pray and we're going to believe God and we're going to trust you for the outcome, Lord. Bless tonight's service, Lord, in a mighty special way. Lord, we don't know who may need this word, Lord God. I pray, Father, that we get our portion. I pray, Father God, we sit tentatively, Lord. We receive that word down in our hearts. We live according to it and be blessed by it. Lord, have your own way. We love you, Father. Lord, we appreciate you, dear God. Bless those online, all the requests that came online, those that are going to hear this word online. My God, that the inspiration will follow, Lord. Lord, have your way. Father, we love you. Lord, we appreciate you, dear God. We bless your holy name forever, dear God. Lord, be with us, and Father, we won't cease to praise you. In Jesus' name and for his sake we pray. Amen. Do we have any midweek announcements? Announcements for Wednesday, April 17th, 2024. There will be nursing home services on Thursday at 6 p.m. at Highland and on Saturday at 3 p.m. at Faith Haven. There will be Sunday school promotions and presentations this Sunday evening, April 21st. Thank you, that's all. What do we have tonight? We have a special. We have a special. Some good days, and I've had some hills to climb. I've had some weary days, oh, and some sleepless nights. But when I look around. some hills to climb. I've had some weary days. Oh, and some sleepless nights. But when I look around and think things all Sometimes 
points the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road then I ask the question Lord oh why so much pain but he knows what is best for me Sometimes the clouds hang low And I can hardly see the road Then I ask the question, Lord Oh, why so much pain? But he knows what is best for me Even though Truly, Lord, we thank you for this service. We thank you for this gathering of your people. Lord, we thank you for the inspiration. Each testimony, each song, Lord God, we have got our portion. And Lord, as our pastor comes, we pray you would bless him. Pray that you would encourage his heart, Lord, free him. Give him the words to say, Lord God, just anoint him from on high. Meet the needs online in our presence tonight, Lord. We don't want to leave without receiving what you have for us. And Father, we've come, Lord God, uh, eager to hear what thus says the Lord. So bless, my God, as the man of God goes forth, Lord, may we sit with attentive hearts, Lord. May we, my God, uh, cast away every distraction, Lord God. We pray that you rebuke the enemy, Lord God. He wants us to focus on this, focus on that. But Lord, we're here to get a word from heaven tonight. Speak and have your way. We won't fail to give you the praise, thanks, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me turn your Bibles to Job chapter number one.
thank you for the service up to this point, including the pre-sermon song. Job chapter number one. Very important word, very important word from the Lord tonight. We ask you to follow along with us. Job chapter number one, begin at verse number one. <clears throat> there was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright, and one that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons and three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep and 3,000 camel and 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all the men of the east. And his sons went and feasted <clears throat> in their houses, every one his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and to drink with them. And it was so, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sacked to sanctify them, and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, it may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. You're no more spiritual than you are at home. You're no more spiritual than you are at home. We'll get to this in just a moment regarding Job's greatness. But if you ever want to see someone's spirituality or someone's depth is not in church, it's not in the performance, it's not in the things that you see. But how is it at home? How is the family altar? We're living in a day and age in which the family altar is not as strong as it once was. People are often dependent upon the Sunday school teacher and the church, the Monday night group to develop their children spiritually. But remember, the primary responsibility of the child's spiritual development starts at home. It starts at home. You want to have a strong church, have strong homes. You can have individuals that's going around doing this, that, and the other, but if the husband and wife can't even pray together, doesn't have confidence in each other. Home is so important. We find that here, that Job was a great man at home. Keep reading. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. You know, a child's growing up and growth, their vision of God and their vision of truth and their vision of the church is not shaped from the pulpit. I've been around long enough. I've seen enough. I have enough experiences. A child's understanding of God, of truth, of the gospel, of the church is not formed in the pulpit. I thought it was. And I said every child that ever grew up in a strong pulpit up under the ministry, or Brother Hampton, I said, every one of those children will have a clear vision of the truth. Oh, they're going to know what the church of God is, what it's not. They're going to know the standards of doctrine, principles, and be able to teach it. Nah. It's somebody that was stronger than Brother Hampton in their life. Guess who it was? Their parents. <laughs> Please. Why do you think you can have two children grow up in the same era, in the same generation? One of them had parents that had the pulpit in their, the message from the pulpit in their experience and they took it home with them, held a standard at home, prayed at home. They saw a sanctified life at home. They don't, you don't, children don't learn sanctification from the heart church. <laughs> Woo, no, no, no. You know, when I first got my first lessons on sanctification was when we were, uh, uh, we were getting a whooping and they said, don't stop all that. I'm getting a whooping. Stop all that. I'm just, ah, just, just letting it go. 
They said, no, 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 stop all that foolishness. Sober up. Get yourself situated. Don't just let yourself go. You must run get out the spirit. Man, I can't get out the spirit getting a whooping. <laughs> I must have got out the spirit to get the whooping. So let me stay out the spirit. Ah, no, no, no. You ain't getting out the spirit. Get yourself situated. Get yourself situated. What? They were letting us know that no, you just don't get to just let yourself go. You don't just get all in your feelings. I'm upset. Ah, whoa, stop. No, 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 no. Some things should never come out of a saint's mouth. And don't come later, I apologize. No, that's where that come from? Where that come from? No, 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 no. The home, saints, if you don't get nothing else from tonight, my Lord, the home, if we keep the home tight, we can go all to Africa, we can go to Houston and LA. But if our homes, the home is the key. The home, you want to build a strong church? Build strong homes. And it start even before you get married, pray through. Pray through. Get somebody that's gonna make a strong home, not somebody with a tight skirt. I'm telling you the truth, that person gonna dictate your home. Okay, what's she sound like? Well, she can sound like a bird. She better pray right. She better have a right attitude in the choir. Please, I'm trying, that's what you need to watch. Quit watching a alto soprano and stuff and watch their attitude. If you got enough discernment, you ain't going to be shocked on the honeymoon. You got enough discernment. Well, but Lee, I was shocked on the honeymoon. I, well, I don't know how you prayed. It is what it is. It is what it is. God ain't the author of confusion. We have no safeguards. I mean, sometimes we might have looked past something. We can be humble and look back. You know what? God, you were trying to show me that. But it's amazing. When you get in love before you pray through, oh, the process works. You ain't got followers, but it works. You bring the ministry a, a, a complete relationship. Just all you want is a ministry to sanction it. You you already in lust, a love of you already y'all already kind of whatever y'all do. Ain't got no counsel whatsoever. Don't have enough humility to receive counsel because you got all the answers. Just keep going then. Keep going. Bypass. Keep going. It starts before you even get married. It's how you start. Pray. And I can go before the courtship. How did you deal with your relations when you got saved? Would you still call on people? Would you still fall on asleep on the phone with him? Well, that's my baby daddy. Y'all ain't together. Stop it. Would you still, oh, I, oh, I. But then one brother came to me. He said, but Lee, I understand this, man. But you understand. I, I need a woman in my life, man. It's like, you know, I need I, I, all the women in my life, man. It's hard for me to let them go because, you know, that's just the way I'm wired. Get unwired by the renewing of your mind. I said, man, I tried to encourage him to get with some of the brothers. I said, man, get with some of the brothers. Here they numbers. He said, man, brothers don't get along like that. Then he tried to switch it and say, what about her? Point at one of the sisters. I said, brother, you just getting saved. Don't go there, man. Don't go there. You ain't even got, your mind ain't having been developed yet. You, you don't even think like Zion. You don't even know how to evaluate like the Holy Ghost wants you to evaluate. Anybody that's trying to start another relationship before you really have formalized your relationship with the Holy Ghost, let me know your priorities. The Bible says seek first the kingdom and all this righteousness. First, you got to seek that relationship, that intimacy with the Holy Ghost. You got to understand the word of God. You got to develop a strong communication with God before you try to de develop a strong communication with somebody else. And sometimes when it don't go right, but you honest and you humble, got to. And you humble, you will say, Lord, I'm sorry. I got out ahead of you. I'm humble myself. And I'm going to seek you and I'm going to trust you. And I'm going to let you lead me. And I'm going to let you guide me. Why? Because it's not going to start there. You're just laying the foundation for your whole life. You're going to have decisions you got to make. You're going to have things you got to deal with. And you want to start off at the beginning. I trust God. I follow God. Seek for, the Bible said acknowledge him in all thy ways and he will direct thy path. Not my eyes, not my feelings, not my emotions. I'm acknowledge him for real with sincerity. You can't do God. It don't work like that. You cannot do God. People are not getting a solid foundation. It takes time to get a, oh, saint, it takes time to be holy. Come on now. It's things about you that you don't even understand that you're trying to bring into the kingdom that God got to chip away from you so you don't bring that into the kingdom and mess up your ministry. 
But before God can even formalize you and the way you are and the way your perspective, don't you realize that you've been wounded? Don't you realize you've been affected by things that you've been involved with, with perspectives that you engage with? All of those perspectives have, have shaped the way you think and the way you operate. Yes, you got saved and God forgave you, but you need a renewing. You got to understand. You got to know you and, and through the eyes of God so God can refine ways of you not ready for no relationship yet. You still get attitudes. My Lord, take your time. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. If you understood it, you would take your time. It's like somebody rushing to the ministry. Do you have a clue and understand what all this entails? You will mess around and destroy your soul because you gave a little testimony. You gave a little exhortation and somebody put some wind behind your ear and said, oh, you the next this, that, and the other. You better not listen to that. You better humble yourself. Go and sit in the back of the church, get a broom, and go on the other side and clean the sanctuary like Brother Kennedy told the old ministers back that wanted to be a minister back in the 80s. Take your time. Do you realize you're putting a target on your back and you let somebody that without experience and don't come up, we need help. It ain't that much help in the world. Let God do it. Don't you destroy it. Don't you have enough, uh, 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 and you need to have enough wisdom that you don't get behind somebody's ear pushing them along the way and don't even understand that God is pushing their roots down deeper. Why? Because that tree is going to go way, way up. And the higher the tree go, the deeper the roots got to go. And if you make them go and start sprouting before they roots go deep enough, you go, they're going to have problems. And if Brother Hampton said, it's not that you fail, it's where you fail from. It's a totally different bargain. Now you're up in front of the saint and you're barking and you're telling the saint what they need and what they don't need. Oh, don't slip. Trust me, don't slip. You gotta take your time. Establish a solid foundation. Get along with God. Understand financial literacy in the kingdom. But what's that? That's consecration. A lot of things you are spending money on, you don't need to spend money on that stuff. You gotta understand consecration, seeking the kingdom, developing a relationship with God. Listen, you get so hidden in God when it's time, they're gonna have to come find you. You ain't all up in nobody's face. I'm available. I'm with your tight stuff on, button by the bus. I'm available. I guess you are. We all know it. Put something on it fits. Come on now. Then pray through. Then let God bless you. Let God lead you. Then be an example. I tell everybody, you want to court, you want to do things as if one day you're going to stand before the young people and teach it. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard to teach something you ain't do. It's amazing how they look at you. What'd you say? And now, mind you, you could have, a, you could have had a, a blunder, but that don't mean that you can't teach it. That means you corrected it. Don't we'll just keep going. It's the difference between a blunder or somebody that didn't do something right and learn from it. We all have learned from things than somebody that decided to do a thing a different way. That's a different spirit. That's a different spirit. You know what's wrong, but you're just so bullheaded. I'm doing it my way. Okay, you're going to pay for it for the rest of your experience. It's going to be limitations on you. You want to live in such a way, ain't no limitations. God, the sky's the limit. God, whatever you want to do with me, that don't mean that nothing happened. That meant that anything happened. I took care of it. I dealt with it. I apologized. Why? Because if you go past it, there's no way that you're really going to see it the way Zion portrays it and the way Zion presents it, so you won't be able to speak with no conviction. If you had a situation, you corrected it, and you understand Zion's way is best, and you go Zion's way, therefore it can be a conviction with you. But if you go a different way, then you can't teach Zion's way. You're going to teach your way, and the whole thing going to go down. How do we get here? I have no, how, 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 do, how, how do we get way over here with this? Because folk is trying to get situated and they want to go forth and folk want to be married. I'll tell y'all more later. Well, y'all, y'all against you just like your daddy, you against court. No, I'm not. Y'all remember they said it, but man, I don't know if y'all heard it. So y'all, if y'all listen close enough, y'all heard it. That he don't like marriage. And he, no, he loved marriage, trust me. But he wanted it to be done the right way. Come on now. No, he celebrated. We celebrate. Mary prayer is wonderful. As long as things is done the right way. Amen. All right, so Job had a strong home life. Well, this is our burden, and we're going to have to skip across the field. Why Job went through, our title tonight, Why Job Went Through. We preach about Job in the Bible, a great man of God. 
and we talk about his suffering. But we want to look at it just from a different perspective tonight. And we've got to quote some of this. So you Bible scholars, write some of this out. Why Job went through. Why did Job go through? Well, the first thing is found in verse 6. When the devil went to church. You said, brother, the devil don't go to church. <laughs> one, one, I think it was one old saint said, not only does he go, he don't miss. <laughs> Ooh, devil dirty. Put on his ear saying this and saying that, saying that. Oh, Father. So the day that the sons of God came together, Satan came, and he basically challenged God. And he said, listen, uh, there's... Where are you coming from? He said, to and fro in the earth. And he's basically put out a challenge. And he says, nobody will serve you and be faithful to you. And he said, have you considered my servant Job? And he said, yeah, you got a hedge about him. That's why he's faithful. You take that hedge, you're out. Let him deal with some unfavorable situations, and he just flip on you like everybody else and flip it on you. Well, he said, "Go ahead and try him." Now, Job was a absolute giant in the faith. Go over to Ezekiel fourteen. This gives you a little insight into the caliber of person that Job was. From a biblical historical perspective, if you wanted to weigh the depth of spirituality in the Old Testament characters, leaders, Ezekiel 14, 14, why Job went through. Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it. What you just say? Though these three men. Huh? Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it. Hold on. Now, this country, they, they, they had gotten off, Israelites had gotten off, and they needed somebody. And he said, though Noah, who, who did he say now? Noah, Daniel. Daniel, and Job. Now, mind you, if you ask anybody that had a pretty good understanding of biblical history about great giants, they would probably say Noah. You know, Noah saved the world, basically. He was a preacher that Christ preached through. And not far after that, around that same realm, they would probably slip in Daniel, <laughs> spiritual giant, prayed three times a day, stood. Come on now, Daniel wouldn't defile himself with the king's meat. Away from, away from Jerusalem, he still wouldn't bow. That's like a young man, a man that's on campus, like on Michigan State's campus, a man. Females may call him. Come on now. We invite him to a party. Tell him to do this, that, and the other. Thank the Lord, but will, amen. Holding, holding it down. Went up the other day, had lunch with him in his dormitory. Amen. Sitting there, talking to him, exhorting one another. He's excited about God, the things of God, by himself. See, sometimes it's, easy to, it's easier to be saved when you're around all the saints every single day. But when you're on some campus somewhere, amen. And some of them women in that room, they weren't dressed like saints. <laughs> Praise the Lord, but we'll hold it down. Amen. Encourage, amen. That was Daniel. Daniel was away from him. They said, Daniel, eat this. He said, no, we don't church God. We won't eat that. We won't do that. Amen. Daniel was solid. Amen. Wouldn't, amen. They told Daniel, don't pray. They said, what'd you say? He said he knew the decree was signed, went up to his room, opened the window. At least, at least he could have shut the window. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, all right, well, let me ask you, would you all have prayed with the window shut? Don't answer. Or open. Hey, but this brother prayed with the window open. And he might just open, open the window. In the name of Je praise, glory. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jehovah Jireh. Amen. You will. I mean, he went forward. Daniel, they threw him in the lions then. This brother had so much Holy Ghost, hungry lions couldn't eat. So you get some Holy Ghost, my God. Get, you get enough Holy Ghost, the lions can't bite you. Try it. <laughs> Come on. Oh, lion spirits. They want to devour you. They want to destroy you on your job. They want to destroy you in the community. They want to destroy you. Oh, lying spirit. Oh, oh, devouring spirits. 
Try it try if you want to. God just shut their mouth. God shut them down. Be quiet. Don't you know? You ain't no, no, no. Just, and they was hungry. Them spirits hungry. The spirit wants something, my Lord. They can't know. Go eat, go eat one of the other saints. You can't eat this one. <laughs> you, go get one of the other saints. You, you don't want to chew on one of them, but you can't chew her. She got too much Holy Ghost for you to bite. Amen. So here, that was Daniel. But along with that was Job. Look at verse 16. Come on and read. In case you didn't read 14. Though these three men were in it, uh -huh. as I live, saith the Lord God. Skip down to verse 20. Though Noah, Daniel, and Job were in it, as I live, saith the Lord God. Come on. They shall deliver neither son nor daughter. They shall not be. Very good. So we see that Job was a spiritual giant. It wasn't just somebody that suffered. And you say, but Lee, give me qualification that you can say he was a spiritual giant. Listen, I'm telling you the depth of Job, and you can see it from a historical perspective. Read the old books. But I tell you this, it's right there in scripture. You say, uh, uh, like if you were to ask somebody here, who do you think is uh, spiritual? If somebody asks you, like, who's a spiritual person? You may give your perspective, oh, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, sister so-and-so, or this young brother, that older brother, this young brother, or this couple, or this, that, that, that's somebody's earthly perspective. <laughs> that's, that's somebody's earthly perspective based upon their algorithm that they decide to utilize with variables they want to interject in it to determine spirituality, okay? But who recommended Job? Not a person. He, he said, of all the people on earth, that's how heavy Job was. He was a giant. First, his home was tight. But not only did he cover his home, but he was more than that. Why did Job go through? One, he went through because he was the caliber of person that God could trust with that level of assignment. He went through because God could trust him that he will go through and come out on top. See, see, God can only allow certain caliber of people to go through like this. But how did he go through? And why did he go through the way he went through? Go to chapter 4. Job chapter 4. Why Job went through. Job chapter 4, verse number 1. Then Eliphaz and the Temanite answered and said, If we essay to commune with thee, wilt thou be grieved? But who can withhold himself from speaking? Behold, thou hast instructed many, and thou hast strengthened the weak hands. Thy words have upholded him that was falling, and thou hast strengthened the feeble knees. But now it is come unto thee, upon thee, and thou faintest. It touches thee, and thou art troubled. Hold on. Deep insight. Job was a minister. Job was a great laborer. Listen. Why Job went through? The way he went through. Listen to what he said. He broke down Job's history. You don't get a lot of insight into Job, but you get enough to know who he was. Home was tight, and he was a laborer. He said, hold on. Okay, let me give it to you like this. Chapter 1, the challenge, and the trial begins. Chapter 2, the trial is enhanced. Scheme for scheme. Declaration declared. It don't matter. I'm going all the way. Chapter 3. His humanity is manifested. Chapter 3 is where he said, let the day that I was born be darkened and let the night be, let my mother's, why was it, why, why, verse 11, why died I not from the womb? Why did I not give up the ghost when I came out of the belly? Why wasn't I still born? Why didn't y'all shut up the doors of my mother's womb? Verse 10. Oh, why? I cur Let him curse be the curse today that the joke. Oh, is this too much? Why am I here? Oh, what? Listen, you can go through some things so heavy that you probably would say some things like Job said it if you were just being real. I, and Lord, I honestly, if I had never been born, I wouldn't be mad at you. 
Lord, if I if you had just bypassed me, I know it says all them different things, all them di- a, a million uh, 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 things go up from the sperms go up, and only one make it to the top, and you brag, I was the one. I wish I wasn't the one. <laughs> Of all the millions, why, why, why? It just, I, I, I'm good. Well, you wouldn't go to heaven. Okay, I wouldn't go to hell either. I wouldn't have been here, so I'm good. I just, why? You can listen to me. You can go through so much, amen, that my God, that you will ble- feel like this. You may not say it, but you will feel like, why am I here? If I didn't wake up tomorrow, I wouldn't be upset. Lord, how much can I take? Lord, this is too much. Lord, why me? Lord, do you really love me? Why could you just prevent me just being here? Oh, Lord, this is too much. I can't take no more. This is far too much. Lord, why me? Why? So after chapter one and chapter two, the challenge, the trial, the enhancing of the trial, and the declaration, Job friend saw chapter three and said, oh, oh, you was doing all that preaching to others. You was lifting up others. You was strengthening others. You was told, telling other people, but now it's coming up on you. And you tell me, I don't want to be here. Oh, you was going to people and telling them, God won't put more on you than you're able to bear. This too shall pass. Oh, you was putting it together. You went from house to house. Oh, you built up. Uh, you sung them song. You sent them to be encouraged, sister. Amen. The God of the mountain uh, is still God in the valley. Oh, you put it together. Why did Job go through the way he went through? Why? Because it's a principle of the devil. Not of God, because remember the trial was okayed by God, but designed by the devil. You got to understand the operations of the devil to understand why Job went through the way he went through. He said it right here. His friend said it right here. He led us into an insight. He said, hold on. You, 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 you. Strengthen the weak hands, those that are tired in the battle, dispirited, tired of going through long afflictions. They're tired of fighting. Hands fight. We war. Teach my hands to war. I'm tired of war. I'm just tired. It's too much. You had the gift to strengthen those with weak hands, but now you're getting tired. Oh, you, you, you. Strengthen those that have fallen. Don't stay there. Get up. Get up. Get up. Get with it, my Lord. Those with feeble knees, what? Trembling. The weight of the battle is too much. When you put too much weight on it, they begin uh, heavy lifters. You can tell when it's get heavier and heavier and heavier. Why? Because the legs start doing like. Oh, the weight of the battle is getting so much. My leg, Lord, is too much. Hold on, sister. Hold on, sister. Hold steady right there. I know it's too much, but God won't put more. Oh, hold on, sister. I'm right there with you. I'm going to hold up. I'm going to spot you. I'm the spotter. Oh, no, it's one thing to be a spotter. It's something else to be the lifter. It's one thing to be the spotter. You go over there and encourage them. You're the spotter, but you ain't lifting. you going home feeling good when they got to stay there. It's one thing to be a spotter. you anointing them with oil, praying for them, and going to eat some chicken. When they, my Lord, are fighting a devil. It's one thing to be a spotter. Hey, Amen. You're going to pray for their children. You go home, and your children are all feeling well. It's one thing to be a spotter. It's another thing to be a lifter. When you're the lifter, your legs sometimes can begin to tremble under the weight of the burdens that you're bearing. And Job was the one that spotted them, encouraged them, who the weight of what they were going through was calling their knees to tremble. Job was the one that took the midnight calls. Sister, call me anytime you want to. I'm right here. And Job was right there with him. Well, his friends let us in on why Job went through the way he went through. Everything he identified was what Job would soon face. This is the key. You have to understand the operation of the devil. Sometimes it's good to have a PhD in God, but sometimes it's good to have at least a bachelor's degree in the devil. (laughs) That just means to understand. Okay, really, give me scripture on that. The Bible said we are not of his. Thank you. You got to know how the devil works. 
Please, you better you don't be don't please don't flunk the devil. <laughs> you may flunk other classes. Don't flunk the devil. You better watch and see what he do to other people and how he get them old. What happened? There? Sometimes somebody mess up. I remember I was getting married. I went to this gentleman in town, noted figure. I said, "Can you give me counsel?" He said, "You want marriage counsel with me? I've been married like five times." I said, "Yes." I want marriage counsel from you. <laughs> Why? So I know exactly what not to do. <laughs> well, I want to I wanted, I wanted study those with the worst marriages <laughs> and the best so I can do the opposite of what y'all did and do what y'all did. Well, here, they had an understanding of the devil. And basically, the whole book of Job covers what they had said. You have those hands that hung down I don't have time to go into it, but I will just a little bit in just a moment. The battle got difficult for him. Those who <laughs> knees were trembling, all the things they were saying basically is what Job, Job didn't go through when the devil said, I'm gonna get Job. I'm gonna get him to curse God in regards to uh, 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 God is not the God of the universe. Or I'm going to get him to worship a pagan God. I'm going to bring a little, a little Dagon and put it up here and make him bow to it. He didn't use that stuff. I'm going to use that Sodom spirit. I'm going to cause some men to come up. He didn't use that stuff with Job. He used the very thing that Job was doing in his ministry and helping other people. Because that's the way the devil works. Why Job went through that way is because that's the way that Job operated, and that's how the devil works. You said, give me scripture. I can't go there, but I will give you scripture. What? It said that Moses was what? The meekest man on earth. Okay. See, the devil, oftentimes, you think, because he's quietly, you think he's going to come at you with your weaknesses. He's going to come at you with your strengths. That's how the devil really works. He'll come at you with your strength. This was Job's strength. Job's strength was helping people that went through long trials, difficult trials. And went, listen, your hands don't hang down from one. Uh, 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 your hands ain't hanging down in the first round. You got to understand and break down the exegete the text. Your hands don't hang down in the first round. You may get knocked out in the first round, but your hand ain't hanging down. No, 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 no. Your hands hang down in about the eighth and ninth round when they gave you body blow. They hit your arms. They teach them, hit them up. Now you're, oh, what? I'm tired of fighting. Many people, they don't want to go back to sin. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes the best saints among us, my Lord, we can get weary. We can get tired. And oftentimes, it'll be the ones that often encourage others because that's how dirty the devil is. The devil will come at you. You real strong with faith. The devil will come at you with unbelief. I'm sitting up here and I'm like, I don't know nobody with stronger faith than Sister Robinson Hampton. My Lord, she's the, the railroad track. God prayed that up. My children, they took them to court. Amen. We prayed them back home. Amen. They, I had no money. We pray, I traveled the world. I said, this sister can pray. This sister got so much faith. This sister can believe God to raise up railroad tracks, to ca cause the court system to reverse their decisions and bring back home the children. This sister can do it. She got so much faith. Then she would stand up because she would say, and people oftentimes repeat the ones who say, I told me you take my husband, my, uh, my house, yay, my own life. But it's another testimony she would give sometimes. Oh, the devil came against me, wanted me to doubt God, wanted me just to say he ain't real, wanted me, I said, what in the world, not you, not you that says, you encourage us all over the world with your testimony of faith, you inspire, you bring in young sisters and teach them faith, that's how dirty the devil is, he'll come at you the same way that you've given yourself to help others. Sometimes when you preach standing, just stand. The devil will come at you that very way to get you to break at the end. After you done declared, stand, say, stand. That's why the pastor often said, pray for me that I can go off on the white horse. Why? Because a lot of my ministry has been about standing. Stand, standing against the world, standing against the flesh, standing against the devil. Stand. He knew all this preaching on standing. Don't you post that. All this preaching on standing. The devil will come. At the end, and try to get you to break. Because that's how dirty he is. Moses, the meekest man on earth. If you go over to chapter 20, it said, These saints, I think they were saints. Were they saints? I think they were saints. <laughs> I, think, I think they were saints. <laughs> Up under the criteria of the law or the Old Testament, they were saints. He said, Man, saying, I'm so tired of y'all. I'm, I'm, I'm tired of you. I'm tired, T, T capital T. <laughs> he 
You know how you do you somebody say anything? T I R E D. Just all cat. I'm tired. <laughs> all right, y'all country folk. <laughs> See, y'all gonna get me in trouble. If I don't pronounce a word right, if I don't pronounce a lyric in a song right, it's like, oh my Lord, that's in a book. He ain't doing this, he didn't say this. So I can't, I can't give a vernacular this. They say, he said tired instead of tired. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if, that, you need, if, that, if, that's, if that's what you do with your time, you may need more <laughs> to do. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, but anyway, but, but anyway, his strength was his meekness. Guess what the devil came with? That very thing, to get tired of the saints, he said, drink ye rebels! Whoa, not Mr. Brother Meek. Praise the Lord. Praise, I'm, I'm unflappable. <laughs> the, 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 the hotter the battle gets, the harder you come at me, the sweeter I get. <laughs> yes, thou sayest. Sure. <laughs> I don't get puffy. <laughs> That's the way the devil came, the very way. Well, let me give it to you like this. There was a man who had a son. This man's son was to finish a work that he couldn't do because he had too much blood on his hands. So he called his son and said, son, come here. I got to go away to all the earth. I prepared the way, built the temple. This son was going to take over. And he went before God. And God said, whatever you want, I'll give you. He could have said, give me a million dollars. Give me this nation. He said, Lord, give me the wisdom to lead your people. God granted him a wisdom that was so deep. But that old dirty devil, dirty, this is the way he works. Your strengths, we're exposing him tonight. Like, how did Joe go through like this? Why didn't he go through the false God? Because this was his strength. He, he had a ministry of lifting up feeble knees. Those that were waiting, he encouraged them. So guess what he went through? The very way that he was ministering. So Solomon, he was endowed with a wisdom that surpassed Euripides and Plato. Socrates too. He wrote to his son. Proverbs chapter 5. My son, be careful of a strange woman. He wrote some deep stuff on women. She'll flatter you with her eyes. But oh, she'll bite us wormwood. Later on, my son, watch the woman that flatters. She'll bring you to an end that is undesirable. A couple chapters later, my son, strange woman has a way, but they'll destroy your latter years. Then you go to later on in chapter number 11 of Kings, it says, go, what did it say for Frank? First Kings said, well, y'all help me tonight. The devil is dirty. Amen. That man preached all this gospel and courtship. All this gospel on women. And what did he say? First King, brother Frank, chapter 11, verse one, maybe. Come on, but Frank, let us but see King this. King Solomon loved many what? strange women. No, but Frank, not, not, it says Solomon? But King Solomon loved many strange women. Not the, te the greatest teacher on, strong, on strange women in all the Bible. He was the wisest and the greatest teacher on strange women. He gave more instructions on strange women than anybody else in the whole Bible. And guess what the devil did? Read, Brother Frank. Come on and read. But Solomon loved many strange women. Come on. Together with the daughters of Pharaoh. Uh-huh. Women of the Moabites, uh -huh. the Ammonites, the Edomites. Why do you need that many different women? Just all different types of color. Brown, light brown, light uh, cream, uh, light tan. Uh, 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 I, you don't need that. Come on, man. You just No, that's a spirit. Read, Brother. Zidonians. Zidonians. And Hittites. Man, you got a Hittite. Wow. Read, brother. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. you should not go in unto them. Oh, my. Don't mess with them. Come on and read. Neither shall they come in unto you. Why? Read. For surely they will turn away your hearts after their God. That's the very thing he told the young man, my son. This is the way the devil works. 
The devil will come at you with your strength. One time, uh, the pastor was talking about, I think it was a young man that stayed in the fourth grade for many years. He was bigger than everybody else, whatever, and they was wrestling outside the thing, and he came and he pushed somebody, and he pushed the person. Put and one big one kid came, tried to put, and he pushed him out. He just put him, used his strength against him. What the enemy does sometimes is to try to use your strength against you. Here, the very thing that Moses' strength was, the devil said, "That's where I got to get him." But let me tell you why. Oh, let me give you one more. Uh, Paul, he said in chapter 8, Romans, he said, what shall uh, separate me from the love of Christ? Shall, shall this, shall, who shall separate me from love? Shall tribulate, shall persecute, shall, yay, and all these things. Guess which way the devil came? Press beyond measure, to despise even life. Oh, he was a false brother. Oh, a thorn in the flesh. It's too much. It's too much. It's too much. He went. Oh, he said, well, what? I couldn't I wouldn't trust in myself. He went through. But thank God he made it through. Thank God he made it through. Why do I know? Because he alluded to this very thing when he was in chapter two of Timothy. He said, what? I fought a good fight. Whoa, I didn't let it. Devil tried to come at me with my strength. I encourage to say, I don't know if there's a greater collection of scriptures that encourage saints more, amen, than Romans 8, 27 through 35. He worked with that. But almost everything he said, you go to 2 Corinthians, go to 1 Corinthians 1, 8, 2 Corinthians 8, 1, uh, uh, 12. I mean, he did almost everything he said, he ended up going against. Why? Because the devil said, you doing all that talking. You doing all that? That's the way I'm going to come. But thank God God's grace is efficient. Thank the Lord God's grace is vicious. Amen. And we know that with Job. So we see that Job went through. But let us look at just a couple of scriptures of how he got through. Come on. Go over, Brother Frank. Go over to Job 10, verse 12. How did he make it through? The devil came against Job in the very area that he had been strengthening other people. Why did Job go through? Because... God chose him to be a representative of a true saint that would go all the way. Why did he go through the way he went through? Because that's the way the enemy works. He'll try to bring your strength against you. There's some people right now fighting against unbelief, and they've encouraged more saints' faith. There's some saints right now that are going through di discouragement. They have the gift of encouragement. Every where they went, they uplift. They go into a room, the whole room just uplifts. But saints... They've spent some nights recently fighting the devil with like almost full discouragement. Just and like what? Because the devil knows that's she's he's she is an encourager. So I'm gonna come the very way. And why? Because you gotta get this, saints. Oh, Holy Spirit, we thank you. The devil. Don't come at us with our strengths just to use our strengths against us. We're saints and we're spiritual beings. We operate in the spiritual realm. When we operate in the spiritual realm, we build up the kingdom of God. When we're building up the kingdom of God, the area that we build up the kingdom of God is the very area the devil wants to tear down. My God. Wow. My God. And if you spent your time building up the kingdom in this area... That's the he not going to go over and get you with some false uh, 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 sexual spirit because you haven't built up the kingdom in that area. The devil is not just after you, but he's after your works. My God. <sighs> Why did Job go through the way he went through? Because Job had spent so much time building up the saints, building up the people of God in a particular area. So if the devil can get you to break, you just didn't break. But all that you've been building up, all that you've been lifting, that's why you got to resist the devil. He's not just after you. He's after your testimony. He's after your legacy. He's after all the work and the good that you've done. He's after all of that. If he can get you, that's why the old preacher would say, pray for me, saints. Why? Because if I get him to break, all 
all those years that he done built up all, all the things that she done, she done prayed for saints at the midnight hour. She burned the midnight hour, the oil. My Lord, if I can get her to break, I can discourage all these over here that have been built up by her. It ain't just you. If when you've labored, when you pray people through, the devil wants to get you in that very area. Why? Because he wants to undo all the good that you've done to discourage other people that you've built up yourself. Don't break, saints. Be encouraged, saints. Hold on to God, saints. Don't let the devil get you. You can't let the devil get you in the very area he wants to get you in. Why? Because it's bigger than just that moment. He's after legacy. He's after all that you've built up. You got to have a consecration that it don't matter. Devil, you're not going to destroy me or destroy all the good I've done or all the good that God has used me to do. I'm not going out like that, devil. I'd rather go to glory than have you mop my, mop my, the world. You got to have that down in you. Get this, saints, real quick. Pray for us. Pray for us. Go ahead, brother. Chapter 10, verse 12. Come on, brother Marcus. Be encouraged, brother. You're inspiring other people. That's why the devil wants to come at you. Come on, brother McNeely. Come on. Job, chapter 10, verse 12. Read. Thou hast granted me life and favor. Come on. And thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. How did he make it through? Because he sought God for visitation. Saints, when you're going through, how did he make it through? Because he sought God for visitation. We talked about why, but let me show you how. When the devil tried to make him mop the floor up with what his testimony was, what his ministry was, he sought God for a visitation. You got to seek God. He said, thou has what, Brother Frank? Thou has granted me life and favor. Uh-huh. And thy visitation hath preserved my spirit. Lord, I need a visitation. Listen, sometimes when you're going through and the devil is attacking you in the very area that you blessed others. He's, he's not coming at you at that moment about you. That's about, that is really about God's work through you. That's what he's after. Saints, y'all got to receive this. It's not just about you. He is after all the things that God has used you for. That's going to bless legacies. That's bless generations. And if he can get a sw one swoop, he got you and all of this. <sighs> well, he said, how did he get through? One, he saw God for a visitation. Saints, you got to get this. Some trials are not going to be an overnight trial, but it's going to be a season that you go through. And when you go through a season, that's when your hands can get low. That's when you, so how do you get through those seasons? See, most people seek God for deliverance when you need to seek him for a visit. Amen. My Lord, Come on, my saints. Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Many people, when they're going through a heavy trial, they're seeking God for deliverance. Okay, and nothing wrong with that. But sometimes you need to seek God for a visit. Why? Because the visit will help sustain you for tomorrow so you don't give up in the middle of it, although your deliverance is not here yet. You guys say, Lord, I need something now. Lord, I need you to visit me now. Lord, that visit can give you an inspiration to the next visit and to the next visit until you come on out to trial. Joe wasn't playing no games. He said, your visit, amen, has strengthened me. Lord, I need a visit tonight. I mean, you may not deliver me, but I need a visit. You may not bring me through. I need a visit. You may not heal me right now, but Lord, I need a visit. I'm going through and my knees are getting weak. I know I've encouraged other people who knees was weak, but Lord, I'm human. I'm human. Oh, discouraging spirit is trying to come over me. Old unbelieving spirit, this is just going to happen and you're going to die. I rebuke the devil. Lord, just give me a visit right now. Lord, and I'll receive it. And when he give it to you, receive it. Bask in it. Don't just run past it. When you sense a visit from God, when he come into the room at the midnight hour, stop right there. Oh, I feel you, Lord. I see you, Lord. I feel the inspiration. My knees are getting strong again. Oh, Lord. Amen. Bask in that visit. Stay right there. Stay me with flagons. Stay right there. Lord, I'm not rushing past it. Lord, I thank you. I appreciate you. I'll celebrate this visit like it's the deliverance. <laughs> I ain't playing no. You gotta get down dirty with the devil. I, my Lord, I'll celebrate it. 
I'll stay right there. I'll thank you for it. I'll take a lap. What are you taking a lap for? You still got the condition. You still got the issue. I'm taking a lap for a visit. He gave me a visit at the midnight hour. Thank you, Lord. I'll celebrate you like you delivered me. I still broke. Still got the condition. Still fighting the devil. But I got a visit. I got a visit from heaven. Amen. And it was from heaven. It wasn't from a saint. It was from heaven. My Lord, because it refreshed me. My Lord, look at verse 13. Come on and read chapter 13, verse 13. Pray for it. We're going to let you go. Verse. Chapter 13, verse 13. Job, how did he make it through? We're just looking just briefly. Amen. We talked about why he went through, the way he went through, but we're looking at how, how did he make it through. That brother sought God for a visit. Hold, See, your hold on, hold on one second. See, the visit is so affirming because sometimes you don't know how it's going to work out. But Lord, I, you may not reveal that, and I don't know how it's going to work out. But Lord, you can give me a visit. It's going to sustain me that I don't give up before I find out how it works out. I don't know how this is going to work out. I don't know if I'm going to get the job. I don't know if I'm going to be healed. I don't know if I'm going to get married. I don't know any of that stuff. But Lord, what I do know is that your visit makes all the difference. And Lord, I'm seeking you with authority for a visit. And I'm not going to let go until I get a visit. I'll get the keys of the church. What you after, bro? I'm after a visit from heaven. I need to feel the hand of God on my shoulder and let me know, son, I'm with you. Son, it's going to be okay. Son, I'm with you. got to get the visit. You got to seek the visit, my Lord. The visit makes all the difference in the world. Visit give you strength. You about to, what is this? I thought you was about to, you ain't like you was going to make it too much further. What happened? I got to visit. Lord, I got to visit. I got to visit. Come on. What did he say about 13? 13 Hold 30. your peace. Yes. Let me alone uh -huh. that I may speak and let come on me what will. Come on. Wherefore do I take my flesh in my teeth and put my life in my hand? Though he slay me, yet will I trust in him, but I will maintain my own ways before him. Okay, sometimes in the middle of a trial, you have to reaffirm your stand at the highest level. Let me say that again. Okay, this was Job's highest level. It may not be yours. Your highest level may be like, hey, though he come back this direction or go her direction, I ain't going nowhere, and I mean it. Let me say that again. It depends on what you're going through. Job, it looked like his life could be gone. The affliction, boy, and it ain't getting no better. Job reaffirmed his stand in the middle of it at the highest level. See, that does something for two people, the two people that is most important. That does something for you, and that does something for the devil. In the middle, you have talking about going to war. In the middle of the war, though he slay me, it don't matter. Though he slay me, though I do not, though he go in, see the devil gets you all involved in emotion. What if he don't come back? What if he likes Sister Matilda and he doesn't come? You know what, devil? It don't matter. Though he go with Sister Matilda, <laughs> though I, I'll go to the wedding and I'll, I'll go to Target and get them the biggest gift I can give them. Though, though, though he go, devil, I'm not going nowhere. I just want you to know, devil, I ain't a fear weather saint. Hold on, I'm not going nowhere. If it don't work out, if it do work, I want you to know, in this trial, whatever the trial is, I'm going to the, I'm affirming at the highest level. Though he slay me, I'm not going nowhere. Lord, Lord I'm not going nowhere. I'm affirming this, I don't get the job, I do get the job. Although they don't talk to me again, it does not matter. I am affirming this at the highest level in the middle of the trial and what this does for yourself. This gives you a boldness and authority. Why? Because the devil will manipulate you if he doesn't understand firmly that you have everything on the altar. If he feels that anything at all regarding what you're going through, my Lord, that, that will cause you to waver. In other words, if he press a little bit further, it'll probably get you. See, if he thinks that in his mind, devil, I want you to know, press as hard as you want to press. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not. See, you got to get down with this. I'm not. It don't matter, devil. That going back is not an option. Yes, I'll cry. Yes, I'll be hurt. Yes, I don't want it to go that way. But I just want you to know. And I'm saying I'm talking. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. 
Amen. I'm not going nowhere. It don't matter. I'm standing with God. I'm going to be okay. Lord, you're going to bring me through. I rebuke you, devil, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'm more than a conqueror. I didn't come this far. He didn't bring me this far to leave me now. He that begun a good work is faithful to perform it. Too many miles behind me. Too many mountains I've already come through. I'm not going back. Oh, Lord, we almost done. It's almost over. He's about to come back. Amen. Any moment now, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, I'm okay. It is what it is. Oh, saints, if all they say quick death, quick heaven. It don't even matter. I'm, I'm, I'm going all the way. You can get in so much inspiration in that moment that you actually understand it. It don't matter. You ain't going to never get married. If I don't ever get married, I'm staying saved. It don't matter. Please avoid headaches anyway. Amen. Praise the Lord. But anyway, praise the Lord. This, hey, this is a different war now. I, I, might, I may start preaching Brother Paul. <laughs> but Paul said for the present distress. <laughs> but I want to get married. I want to get for what? One, all you're going to do is escalated trials. <laughs> yeah, well, we can do a honeymoon. How long that's going to last? <laughs> this ain't no joke. I'm telling you, you may get it settled. I don't care if I never get married. If, I, if God come back in four years, praise the Lord. Amen. I'll travel with the saints. I'll be encouraged. And I'm going to be encouraged, too. I ain't, I ain't crying myself to sleep. Praise the Lord. Amen. Real quick, real quick. We got to go. Go, go to uh, uh, chapter 14. Chapter 14. We done 13. How did he make it through? He reaffirmed the stand. He asked for that visit. Come on. Verse. Verse 14, 1. Come a on, man, Sister Lisa. Read. Man that is born of a woman uh -huh. is a few days and full of trouble. Listen, he put his trials in perspective. He said life is short. First of all, he said man that is born of a woman, first of all, life is short. See, sometimes saints, you, you understand. This wasn't a surface trial. See, when you go down to the root of the real deep, deep, deep trials, brother, you, you got to put life in perspective. Listen, life is short anyway. That will come to, and I start thinking back, listen, th those saints that left recently, they just went a little bit before the, the ones that went before them. They went a little bit before the one, and then pretty soon, y'all going to be putting some dirt on me and eating some chicken. And it's Life is short. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> It, it is what I'm, listen, I'm almost on the other side of uh, half a century. It is what it is. I got way more less in front of me than I got behind me. It is what it is. Job went there. He said, man, listen, life is short. And to be honest with you, it's full of trouble. Put in perspective, life, life is one trial to the next. I'm putting life in perspective. I'm not going to let the devil. It, it is what it is. In other words, Job said, I signed up for this. Yes, sir. It, 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 I mean, this, 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 I, I enjoy the mountaintops, but it's probably going to be more valleys. But I'm going to be okay. You know why? Because we're living to live again. My God, amen. We got to understand that. Hope. Don't you get caught up with this you world. Hope, brother. Don't you? Amen. We're living to live again. Amen, amen. The trials of this world are not worthy to be compared to what he has. All right, go to verse chapter 16 real quick. Chapter 16, 12. Come on. Why Job went through. I was at ease. Come on. But he had broken me asunder. You know what? Job was spiritual enough to understand some things that I go through was to challenge me to go higher. You hear what this brother said? He said, I was at ease. This brother having devotion with his family, brother encouraging other people to say, yeah. But he said, you know what? There was an element. And when you go through some heavy stuff, the digging you do at that moment is, is much easier to fast. <laughs> It's much easier to pray harder and go further. What? When you are not going through on a certain level, you, 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 you are praying, but you really pray. You really pray. You re and Job put it in perspective. He said, what? You know what? I was at ease. But now, this trial then lit a fire up under me. I was at ease. I, I took my health for granted. I took serve, the fact that you can get up and go to church. Praise God. That you felt good to rejoice. Take a lap. Let's take a lap. Come on, y'all. He said, you know what? I was, I prayed. Father, thank you for blessing me to have a good day. Bless me to have a good night's rest. Amen. <laughs> you can go through something. You'll go to the other room, shut the door, lock the door, go downstairs. Father, 
in the name of Jesus. Lord, I need you. I just want to thank you for what you've done. Lord, you know where I'm at. Lord, you see how the devil's trying to break me. Lord, you know. Father, you've been faithful down through the years. Lord God, you said I'll never leave thee, and you haven't done it. Lord, but I need you now. I was at ease. When you go through at a certain level, you'll realize this thing is going to shake something in me. That nothing else, no sermon would have shook. You can go through some, oh, believe, go, okay. You can go through some things. It will light a fire up under you. It, 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 it'll cause you to dig deeper. It'll cause you to go, go, go with more fervency. How did he make it through? He made it through because in the middle of it, See, sometimes, saints, you got to understand, some of the visitation and some of the encouragement is when you understand what the trial is doing for you before you get out of it. Sometimes you sit there and some of the old saints, they start rejoicing in the middle of a trial. Why? Because they realize this trial is so deep, it's going to do something for me that nothing else would have. Some of the old saints, this, I'm, I'm rejoicing. I'm in the middle of a trial. I'm on fire. The night my lord said, Mother Tucker called, she said, literally, I'm on fire. fire. Did she say fire? Yeah, fire. My whole body from the crown of my head. I'm on fire. This is too much. But my lord, that next morning, she gave the most glorious testimony. My lord, hey, man. She said, oh, saints, you don't understand. It was like God bought a fire hose, my lord, and put the God, oh. That thing called me to pray and called me to pray. It did something for me. Real quick, go to 19. Verse 19, 16, 19. 16, 19. It's down a couple of verses. Also now, uh -huh. behold, my witness is in heaven, uh -huh. and my record is on high. Hold on. Job had confidence in his experience. He reaffirmed that confidence. He said, listen, I don't, you can go through some trials you got to reaffirm your experience in heaven, not a pat on the back from the saints. I need to get something from God that God reaffirms my Holy Ghost, that God reaffirms integrity of my experience. He said, my witness is where, Brother Frank? My witness is in heaven. No, Brother so-and-so is my witness. They my can tell witness you. is in heaven. Sister so-and-so, she can tell you that I got a real experience with God. Oh, no. See, you go through some trials, you're going to make it through, you're going to need a witness from heaven. You're going to need heaven to let you know you're good. The devil come against you telling you ain't safe, telling you did it. You did it. No, no, no. Lord, you're going to make it through. You're going to get a witness from heaven. Amen. Why well, saints have puff you up and saints have dog. Oh, not saints, but well, well, well some people will. I got to catch myself. Some people, they say, really, no, keep going. You got to, you got to, you use about to, I mean, people, let me be safe. People will puff you up, and people will tear you down. So I don't want no witness from men. The witness of men, please, please. I need a, my witness is in heaven. I got before God, and God gave me a witness from heaven. And what did he say? My record, what, Brother Frank? My witness is in heaven. Yes. 19. My witness is in heaven, uh -huh. and my record. Is on high. No, my record, brother so and so got my record. He can tell you, no, this brother got affirmed from above. In the middle of a trial, I need a confirmation from above. Amen. Go to verse, oh, Father. I, I, well, let me, let me, let me, let me, because I want to get to the end. In uh, verse 13, chapter 19, verse 13. Just go to real quick. We, we, we're done. Come on. He had put my brethren far from me, uh -huh. and my acquaintances, are verily estranged from me. Mm -hmm. My kinfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. Come on. They that dwell in mine house, and my maids count me for a stranger. Come on. I am an alien in their sight. Come on. I called my servant, and he gave no answer. Mm -hmm. I entreated him with my mouth. Mm -hmm. My breath is strange to my wife. What? My now, breath now, hold on, is hold on, strange hold on, hold on. to my wife. My kinfolk, my brethren. My wife, my friends, sometimes you can go through trials and you feel all alone. You feel that there is nobody that understands that is really with me in this. There's some people praying for me, 
but not really with me. You're going to have to have an experience that even in those moments that you keep going. You keep going. Those that make it through, they make it through the lonely times of the trial. Then he went further in chapter 23. Don't go there. But he said, go forward. My friend, my kinfolk, my wife, breath is straight. I'm so alone in this. He said, now I'm going to God. And I don't even feel that intimacy. I go forward, King. I'm not. Hold on. But he said, he knoweth the way that I take. He says, what? I got confidence in the way that God has guided me in my times of peace. The instruction he gave me, I wasn't playing church in times of peace. I, I understood how to go through in times of peace. I understood how to keep the faith. I understood how to let God fight my battles. I understood how to go through right. And when he has tried me, I shall come forth as pure gold. My feet have not slipped from his steps. What? I, I, I'm standing on what he showed me. I, I'm a... Although I don't feel God, I know that he is approving of where I'm at and he knows where I'm at because I'm where his word has guided me to be at in the middle of trial. Oh, Lord, he knoweth the way that I take. I'm not being carnal. I'm not fighting back. I'm not running to man for help. I'm trusting God. I'm keeping my spirit right. Amen. So when I don't feel God, I know God. Woo. When I don't sense God, I know God. I know that he know. How did he say he know him? He said what? I, he knoweth. I know God because I know that he know the way that I take. Oh, thank you, Lord. You can make it through when you really know God and how God operates. He's not going to leave me out here. He know exactly what I'm doing when I'm taking my stand, when I'm fighting the devil, when I'm not giving in. I know he knoweth the way that I take because he's guided me this way. All right, go over to uh, chapter 19, verse 25, real quick. Chapter 19, verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. Now listen to this. This is just thrown out here, and many commentaries struggle with me. Listen, this brother in the middle of a trial, he says, I, not only am I, see, whew, sometimes in the middle of a trial, the devil, you got to let the devil know, I still believe in the big picture. Everything from the garden all through Abrahamic covenant, nation development, Egypt, post, all, Daniel, everything was about one thing, one person. The Redeemer's coming. See, when you are going through, the devil is not after just your little trial you're going through, but he's after the big picture in your perspective. But when you're going through, you got to let the devil know, I still believe in the big picture. You see, what the devil will do when you're going through a trial, he'll get you to try to give up faith in that trial that God ain't going to come through. But what he's after more than that is for your vision and your understanding and your faith in the big picture. My Lord, you, I know my Redeemer lives. I know God still works. I know God is all that he says he is. I know the word of God. Every promise is true. All the promises are in him. Yea, I still believe in all the Bible proclaims. Every promise. He said, I'll never leave you. He said, my Lord, I am the Lord God. I supply all you need. He said, I am the Lord God that healeth thee. I still believe in justification. I still believe in sanctification. I still believe in the church of God. I still believe in divine healing. I know my Redeemer living. He's coming back for a glorious church. I rebuke the devil. Amen. The power is still here. The church is still here. There will be a remnant. The church is still the church. I don't care, devil. I'm not going to throw the tile in. It don't matter if nobody do it. It's still right. It's still right. I believe. I believe in all of it. I'm not going to let you take none of it from me. I believe God. I may be going through a trial. I may not know how this trial is going to come out, but I'm letting you know, I know how it's all going to come out. We win in the end. We win in the end. We go out, amen, on top in the end. He's coming back for a glorious church without spot or wrinkle. We're going back with glory. Church ain't dead. God ain't dead. The promises ain't dead. Divine healing ain't dead. Amen, justification ain't dead. Sanctification ain't dead. In the middle of the trial, he just threw it out there and let the devil know. I know 
My Redeemer liveth, and he shall, amen, stand in the latter day upon the earth, and I shall see him. Oh, he started letting the devil know. I still believe in the big picture. I still believe God is on the throne. I still believe God is all that he says he is. Look at verse number, look at verse number 29, Brother Frank, chapter 29. How did he make it through? He maintained faith in the big picture. Lord, help us. The devil is after the big picture, saints. The devil is after you micro and macro. He wants to come at you micro, your little trial. But that trial is to get you to lose faith in the macro. Saints, receive that. Receive that. He come at you on a micro level so you lose faith in the macro. Job, on a micro level, was battling loss of his children, loss of his health, loss of his friends. That was micro. But Job switched the script in the middle of a micro and declared a macro. <sighs> Listen, what he did in that moment was just took a big old sledgehammer and just, and just said, whop up, boom. The devil said, man, don't go there. No. You believe in the big picture? Don't nobody believe in that no more. No. You believe in everything. I believe in everything God has ever declared. I believe in his word at the highest level. I believe in his church 100%. What type of person are you? In the middle of a trial, you're going to declare the macro. Wow, Job, that's how you make it through. <laughs> Come on, but Frank, read real quick. This is a very important one. I wouldn't even say it if it wasn't. Come on, 29, 20. 29, 20. Come on. My glory was fresh in me, uh -huh. and my bow was renewed in my hand. Hold on. He said my glory was made fresh in me, and my bow. <laughs> Come on. This brother, the importance of divine inspiration. He said, my glory was fresh within me. Hold on, I'm getting tired. I'm getting tired in this war. Boom, arrow, boom, boom. He said, but hold on. I done messed around and got some fresh glory. I done messed around and got some fresh glory. I don't know if it was an exhortation from brother so-and-so. Sometimes a saint could come with the right word at the right time, give you inspiration. Sometimes you can go to church and the right message at the right time, give you inspiration. Sometimes you can read the word. My Lord, you stay on it. You, you read a scripture. You ain't get it there. I'm reading another scripture. It ain't there. I'm reading another scripture. It ain't there. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, my glory was made fresh. You cannot do anything without inspiration. If you don't keep fresh inspiration, you are no match for the devil. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how determined you are. You need inspiration. Every time we come to church, we need inspiration. The saints are going through tonight, right now. Saints are going through. They need inspiration. Inspiration will carry you through. Inspiration to give you power. Inspiration will renew you. His brother was able to make it through because he kept inspiration alive. Let's keep inspiration alive, saints. Amen. 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 All right, close this out, Brother Frank. Go to chapter 42. Close this out. Why Job went through? Job went through because God selected him. Why did Job go through the way he went through? Job went through the way he went through because this was the way he encouraged others. He had built up others. And the devil oftentimes wants to come at us the way that we have built up others to destroy us and the work that God has used you to do. But how did he get through? How did he get through? How did he get through? He got a visit in the midst of his trial. He reaffirmed his stand. It don't matter. I'm going all the way with God. My God. He put his trial in perspective. My, my, my. Man that is born of a woman. I'm only here a few days. Lord, my resting shall be over there. This world is not my home. He understood that a trial could make me go higher. I was at ease. I was relaxing. This trial lit a fire up under me. My Lord was so encouraged by Sister Nisa the other day on the morning call. Sister Nisa began to say, I was going over to Sister Lisa's house, and I'm encouraging Sister Lisa, and I wanted to do something. The devil tried to discourage me. And I said, here she is going through herself. She said, I'm not going to be at ease. No, I'm going to encourage other people. Praise the Lord. 
Now, you got to be careful going to encourage people. I went the other day to encourage Mother Tucker and left with my tail between my legs. I walk in, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. The pastor's here, praise the Lord, Sister Tucker, praise the Lord. Good to see you, Mother Tucker, praise the Lord. Amen, praise the Lord. Yeah, come on in. I came on in, praise the Lord, amen. Sat down, I saw she had her Bible and she had other things out. And then she had a, this Bible word game. I said, Mother Tucker, do you know the different elements of the book? So I ripped out a page and said, this is my page. That's your page. I think I had rivers and something. And she, I had rivers and mountains. And she had, I think, great women of the Bible or something. And I said, all right, you ready? She said, yeah. I gave her a pen. I got a pen. I said, ready, set, go. Saints. I know the Bible, <laughs> Mount Sinai, Mount Zion. They started naming Mount Pisian, but rivers I ain't never heard of. Sister Robin, but Beavers didn't teach them to me in Sunday school. I mean, rivers, I'm good. Next thing I know, I'm up here trying to figure it out and try to get going. Mother Tucker pen was down. I looked over. She started. She started giggling. <laughs> I said, Mother Tucker, what are you talking about? <laughs> I said, you done? <laughs> I said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. I got 17 more words to go in the Bible with the pastor going to encourage us. <laughs> then I had to pray for her. <laughs> Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, please. <laughs> but wait, how are you going to get a fervent prayer when you destroy the pastor at the Bible game? My Lord, my Lord, my Lord. Mother Tucker, I still love you. Amen. <laughs> Job Amen. chapter 42. Brother Frank, don't read it. It simply says that Job said, I've heard about you with the hearing of the ear. He said, but after I've gone through all this, now I know. And then in verse 6, he apologized. He said, man, wherefore I abhor myself. I repent in dust and ashes. What? Because of chapter 3. In a few other places, I allowed myself. This is deep. He says, I heard about you. And what I was giving people was what I heard. Y'all ain't getting this. I heard about you, so I was going to people's house. You can make it. You can, no matter how dark it is, no matter if you get pain in the crown of your head, and you ain't never had no pain. Never had no pain. No, you can go through. If you lost somebody close to you, God is more than a person. You ain't never lost nobody close to you. No, you go through seasons of trials. You, what season of trial have you gone through? So Job was going around, taking what he had heard and encouraging others. But he said, devil, you meant to break me. You meant to break me, but now I got it for real. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. Now I'm like Peter and John, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have. Now I can tell you, amen, when you got to rub the pot chair and the boils off of you, when you have no brother, nor sister, nor mother around you, now I can tell you how to go through, amen, when it seems dark as a thousand midnight, now I can tell you, when you don't feel God, no way around, now I can tell you, when your wife say curse God and die, now I can tell you, when you lose everything, how God is more than able to keep you going in the midst of it, now, now, now. I got what I've been talking about. I got what I've been preaching about. And then he went on and it said the Lord blessed the latter end of Job. Because he went through and he didn't give up more than his former. Our prayer, saints, is that we understand why Job went through. Lord bless you. Amen. Bless the Lord. We know saints are going through, but the things that were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through much 
patience may have what we need to go through. We thank Brother Job for going through. We're thankful for even chapter 3 where his humanity was on display and he cursed the day that he was born. Shall we stand? Let's just sing one verse of song and we're going to let you go. You've been an amazing audience. Just one verse. If you could suffer this one verse. Be encouraged, that soul that is going through tonight. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. You're not alone. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. We know the devil want to attack you in the very area that you've encouraged others. But be encouraged. God's going to bring you through. And you're going to come through with more than you had before. Job had twice as much. Go ahead and sing. Just one verse. Am I a soldier? Come on, saints. Come on. Am I a soldier of the cross? Of the cross. Let's sing, saints. Come on. Sure, sure I must fight. I must fight if, I if I would reign. This is pray tonight. Increase. Increase my courage. Lord. Somebody need this tonight, saints. Pray this prayer. Lord, give me this word in my heart. Come on, sing that chorus one more time. Be encouraged, saints. God's going to bring you through. God's going to bring you through. Come on. The devil want to reverse it. But God's going to reverse it right back. You coming out this with more, Mother Tucker. Come on, Sister Nisa. Come on, Brother Montano. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, Sister Melinda. Come on, soldier. My, my. Yes, yeah, Sister Lisa. Come on, Uncle Larry. Come on. Thank the Lord. Sing that chorus one more time. Come on, Sister Rhonda. Come on. Yes. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Come on, Sister Deb. Come on, Sister Tony. My, 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 my. Come on, Rashonda. My Lord, my Lord. Yes. Thank you, Lord. We're not alone, saints. We're not alone. Sing that chorus just one more time. Sure, saints. Come on, we got to go through. They went through, but we can make it through. Put it in perspective. We only here for a few days. Thank the Lord. Amen. It's almost over. Thank you, Lord. My, my. Give me that visit. Give me that visit, Lord. Give me that visit. Every head is bowed. Father, we thank you for your goodness and faithfulness. We thank you for your word, dear God. Father, dear God, your word is alive. It's not a dead book. It's alive. It's real. Father, what do it mean that it's alive? Father, it, 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 it breathes through the Holy Spirit. It, 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 it speaks to us where we're at, although it's written thousands of years ago. Father, the, the, many historians believe that Job was pre-Egypt. They believe that he was, he was a contemporary with Abraham and Melchizedek and Lot. Father, we just thank you that although he dates way back then, the word is fresh today because we're going through. And Lord God, the way he went through, we can go through. And how you brought him through, you can bring us through. We thank you, Lord, that our trials are not in vain, but they draw us closer to God. He said, I was at ease until I went through. Not that he was at ease per se, but he was as ease as it compares to how he's fervent now that he's going through such a fervent trial father noah daniel job thank you dear god for brother job's legacy help us dear god to be faithful until the very end that we can come out of our trial better than we went in it bless the saint that is going through in their body tonight father rebuke the devil rebuke satan lord Bless Sister Montano, Lord God. Sister Lilia. Father, bless Sister Anna, dear God. Father, bless Sarai, Lord God. 
Bless Edder, Lord God. Bless Mother, uh, uh, Sister Betty, dear God. Father, we pray, dear God, that you bless Sister uh, 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 Lisa and all of her children, Lord God. Father, we pray you bless Sister Nisa, Sister Robin, dear God. Father, Sister Kim, different ones that stand over there, Lord God. Sister Lindley, Lord. Father, we pray you bless the saints that are going through, dear God. Father, we got some silent sufferers among us, dear Lord, that are going through, dear God. Father, bless Juan Cito, dear God. Be with him in a special way, dear God. Father, we pray, dear God, the saints, children that are going through. Bless Sister Bradshaw's husband, Lord God. Father, help him in a special way, dear God. Bless Sister, Lord God, uh, 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 Brother Bill, dear God. Father, we pray you strengthen him. Thank you how you raised him up, Lord God. We appreciate you. Bless Sister Jessica, Lord God. Father, hold her up, Lord God. Father, this too shall pass, dear God. Draw her closer in the midst of it, dear God. Father, bless Alea. Father, we're praying for the fullness of Alea's healing in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray, dear Lord, you bless Mount Zion, dear God. Father, we pray, dear Lord, you bless in a special way, Sister Sonia Adams, Lord God. She came to church, Lord God. Father, she got a lot on her plate right now. Give her guidance and instruction. Give her a fresh touch from heaven. Rebuke the devil. Bless Brother Alvin, new converse, Lord God. God save this week. We pray you bless him in a special way. Father, you know all the saints that are going through. You know, dear God, the, uh, the, uh, the young man, dear God. Father, dear God, the sister Herndon mentioned, Lord. You know all about that, dear God. Father, you know many are the affliction of the righteous. Father, sister Sproles, dear God. Father, you know what she's dealing with. You know her daughter, dear God. That's a heavy burden on her, Lord. Father, undertake in a special way. Father, we pray right now you go to where Sister Mary is at. Go to where Sister Mary Holmes is at. Help her to understand, dear God, that you're with her. You're going to bring her through. We rebuke the devil. We bind you, Satan, in the name of Jesus. The devil's upset, Lord. The devil's upset. But thank God that God is still on the throne. Have your divine way, Lord. Bless the saints, Lord God. Father, bless Sister Kamila and all that she's dealing with. Father, bless the expecting mothers, Lord God. Hold them up. We bind the devil. Thank you for bringing Sister Malia through, dear God. Father, thank you, dear God, how you bought. Amen. Amen. Uh, 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 the, uh, uh, the birds is through, dear God. We appreciate you for that. Thank you still, Lord, how they said there's no hope. Father, but Gigi is here tonight. Come on, Lord. Thank you, Sister Maurice is here. Thank you, Lord. We just appreciate you. Love you, Lord. The devil wants us to focus on the negative. But, Lord, we thank you, dear God, that there are saints in glory and there are saints still being blessed. Have your divine way. In Jesus' name, amen. Tomorrow morning, we'll be on the call at 10. Please join us. Friday night, we'll be back here for Bible study. Anything else for the good of the order? You all have been an amazing audience. They're going to give us a verse of song. You are dismissed. You all have been too good. Brother. Oh, I'm sorry. There was just one announcement that was a little late in. Is it okay if I give it right now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, uh, Sister Juanita just would like to announce that the 11 and 13 year olds need to meet at the church at 5:30 for presentation rehearsal um, tomorrow. Okay. I'm Thank you, Saints. Love you all. Love you all. But Joseph, be encouraged. But Joseph, I got your text, man. Be encouraged, but Joseph, let's keep holding him up. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. You may go through, but God will bring you through. Come on, Sister Keon. I got your text. Praise the Lord, seven-siller. Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Rick. Get that tenor ready. Come on, man. Yes. Come on, Brother George Lyons. We're going to make it. Come on, Brother George. We're going to make it. We're going to make it. Come on, Sister. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sister Sanders, come on. We're going to make it. You. You, Sister Sanders. We're going to make it. Come on, we almost at the end. We almost at the end. Come on, yes. Prayer meeting tomorrow morning. Oh, Sister Melinda, hold Sister Melinda up, saints. She's still on her bed of affliction. Hold her up. Sister Melinda, we got you. We got you, Sister Melinda. Come on. Yes. Come on, sister. Amen. Sister Dorothy Thompson, we're going to be okay. Come on, Sister Love made it back. Praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sister Marvel, we got you. We got you, Sister Marvel. Praise the Lord. Come on. Amen. Sister Credit, we got too many miles behind us, Sister Credit. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. That's why the devil coming at you the way he is. He know he has discouraged all of us. But praise the Lord, we're going to make it. You're going to make it. Praise the Lord. Haley going to make it. Praise the Lord.
Come on, Sister Paige. Come on, Sister Cynthia Boyer. We're going to make it, Sister Cynthia. Praise the Lord, Sister. Amen. Maria, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Stanley Rice. Glory be to God. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Since I laid my burden down, a friend of grace. Come on, Brother Burris. We look forward to seeing you next week. You got family out here. A big, handsome, another Burris. Praise the Lord. My, 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 my. Come on. Come on, Sister Brittany. Praise the Lord. Amen. We gonna, we, yes, we gonna make it. We ain't playing no games with you. Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Jay. Brother Johnny and Brother Jalen. My Lord, three J's in a row. Brother Jay, Brother Johnny, and Brother Jalen. Come on, praise the Lord. Brother Ben, Brother Faith. Brother Faith. Brother Ben, Brother Faith. Glory be to God. Amen. Podcast today. Pastor Hampton Podcast. Bless you, saints. Everybody who name I didn't mention, thank God for you too. <laughs>